finally moving forward with self-publishing our book on Lulu and today I'm going to prep my images and also make a very, very rough, it's not going to be pretty, mock-up of our book. So I've talked a little bit before about figuring out what your file is going to be depending on the size of your book and how many pages and all of this. I'm just going to very quickly review that for you with my own specifications. So the things that I am picking are not, not necessarily what you're going to need. But here I am signed into Lulu. And if I scroll down to guides and templates, find a guide. I want to create a book, book creation guide. We'll download this guide. You can print this off. I like having it printed for easy reference, but I have the ability to screen record this so I'm just keeping it on the screen for now. So scrolling down it gives us a lot of information and we're not going to need all of it. Myself I already know that my images are going to be black and white so I'm going to pick the black and white color option. This tells us about graphic resolution so we're going to want ours at the 300 pixels per inch or printed at the 300 dpi dots per inch. When I go to set up my file, I know I'm going to set it at 300. Document setup, color setup. I know specifically for mine, because my images are in black and white, it's going to be grayscale color. It's got all these formatting terms. I recommend that you read them all. My specific book is going to be full bleed, so it goes, that means that it goes straight to the edges. Um, and it will show you an example of that in a minute. It's just going out over all of the terms right now. So the gutter is the inside margins for where the book folds. It goes over how much um, it, margin you're going to need based on your page count, for example. And when I go down here, this is talking about the full bleed. So basically this middle one here has got the image going straight to the edges. And the first one has images touching the edges, so you need to use full bleed, which means that um, you need to have your document sized appropriately to have the bleed margin accounted for. If your image is not doing that, you can have your document size to be the size of the book and they will just add the bleed margin for you. But because I'm doing full bleed, I needed to know how much to add. So they print their book files with a bleed margin of 0 0.125 inches. I'm working with inches, so I'm just going to ignore the millimeters on all size, on all sides. So I know that whatever size my book that I'm printing at, which is going to be an 8.5 inch square, I need to add that much onto it to account for the full bleed. You will probably be picking different size book and have your own specific things that you need to know. And that's what this chart is for. It goes over all of their... Um, trim name, trim size, material fire, file dimensions if you're not having a full bleed, and uh, the dimensions if you are. So if I go down here, it will tell me specifically I'm choosing the square 8.5 by 8.5. With the full bleed, it becomes 8.75 by 8.75. That is my document size. So I know specifically for my project, I need 300 dpi, I need grayscale color, and I need 8.75 by 8.75. Now, because I have figured that out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Photoshop and you can do this probably with other editing software. Uh, it's not going to be specific to Photoshop. This is mostly just so that I can set up a document with those specifications and then pop my images into basically that uh, photo template that I've created. Now I'm going into File New and from there I can set up my document to have the specifications that I need. I'm going to tie it, title it Haunted Pages. So I need it inches. I've discovered I need 8.75 by 8.75. My pixels per inch is going to be 300 and my color mode is grayscale. And now I click create. This is the document with all the specifications that I need. Now what I can do is I can open up my images and just copy paste them onto this document and then file save as for each image and it will save that image with 
the size and the re resolution and the color mode that I need. So for example, let's open up an image. So here is a folder that I put all of the, image, the images that I think I might want to put into my book. I haven't 100% decided that I'm going to use all of them, but anything that I think maybe I want to put in, I put into one folder just so I can navigate easily. I'm going to just pick one of these random images and open it up. I'm going to go Control A to select it, Control C to copy it. I'm going to click back onto my document with all the specifications that we need. I'm going to hit Control V and that will pop it onto that page. Now this image is already, oh, it looks like it's a little bit big. So if I hit Control T, that's transform, and I can see that my image is outlined here with blue, and I can drag it to be a little bit smaller to fit perfectly onto the document size that I want. So once I have it in place, I know that it is in grayscale, it's got 300 dots per inch, and it is the size that I need. So I can con hit Control Alt S, and that will let me save as, and I can give it a new pa a page name, so Haunted Pages 1, and save it as a JPEG. So because it might start to get confusing, I think that I would prefer to create a new folder, and we'll just write ready for print and we'll put it in there and then we know that the ones that are ready for print are the images that we're going to use for our interior and I do that for all of the images and then they are all ready with each specification good to go so once I have done all that though now I can start thinking about the layout and I don't suggest doing this on the computer in your PDF file that you're going to be creating. What I recommend doing is actually printing out all of your images at a smaller size and it can just be a rough draft. I went with the wallet size and I printed all of my images just like this and I cut them out and then I can have them laying out in front of me and I can start moving them around and mixing and matching them. What I like to do is I like to find images that work well together because as soon as you put that image in a book next to another image, it's no longer a standalone image. Whether you like it or not, it's going to interact with whatever the other pictures are. So you have to really keep that in mind when you're designing your book. And I would look for things that were similar but different so that they worked well together. So for example, I might choose an image with my hands that are showing and match it with just an image of my hand. Or this image here, my hair is caught in some branches. And in this image here, a bird is on some branches. So I like to look for different elements or things that are happening in the photo that work well together but are not too much the same. Two things I wouldn't put together is maybe this one of the stairs. It's got some harsh lighting and some shadows. It's interior. And then this one is a portrait. It's outside. It's much flatter lighting. So maybe those two I wouldn't put together as an example. I actually found that process really fun, trying to mix and match which ones go together. And this is usually where you'll discover if there's an image that you don't want in your book or images that you don't want in your book, this is the area where you will be eliminating them because they maybe just won't match with anything else. You just can't find anything that works together. And uh, so that is kind of the elimination process. Once I had matched all of my images into pairs, I decided to put them into a little book so that I could kind of get an idea of what it would be like to flip through them. And the way that I did that is really easy. I just took plain paper. My book is going to be square, so specifically I could fold this one in half and then fold it in half again. And it's not quite square, so I would trim the edge. I could assemble them into little smaller booklets, staple it in the middle before arranging it into a bigger one. And then I just took a piece of tape and I taped just on the top one image at a time so that if I did want to move them, it, it wasn't super adhered to that spot. I could just peel it off. 
and then glue or stick or whatever the images to the inside as needed to get an idea of how I want my book to be. When I was happy with my book, now I know the image order from front to back, also the pairings of the images, and also it gives you an actual feel of what it will be like to hold it and look at it. And I know it's super rough looking, but it's a better example than trying to do the flip through on the computer. It's just not the same and you catch things differently. Things look different. They feel different. And so I highly recommend that you don't skip this step and that you take the time to mock up a little booklet for yourself to have an idea of how this book is going to be laid out and designed. Of course, I was easy on myself. I picked one image per page. It's going to take a, a whole page. You might have pages that have multiple images. You might want to make a bigger book than this. You might want to use bigger prints than this. Um, do what works for you, but I do recommend not skipping this. I sure hope that you had fun making the mock-up for your photo book. In the next video, we're going to actually make the interior document for your book. We're getting really close to finishing this project. I'm really excited to hear about your guys' photo books, so stay tuned for the next video. Mm -hmm.